I don't even know what to say. Uh... Chili Bowl champion, Logan Phoebe. To finally get uh, that fifth that I felt like I was so close to so many times. <laughs> I love you so much. For 39, that's Logan Seavey, the California native. Totally different uh, you know, game here this year. Uh, now, I just got to do my job. If you don't want to bring it back, don't bring it back. And out of corner number four, green flag. We go racing. It's a green car battle at the front. CD holds on a second. Crossover move high to low. And CD's going to retake the lead on the restart. And out of the final turn, Chili Bowl champion, Logan CD. Logan CD fulfills the promise that he's had for so many years. And Kevin Swindell gets a Chili Bowl. A car owner. How cool is that? Golden Thriller Trophy with his driver Logan CD. He wanted Logan in his car from day one. The two formed a great partnership. It all comes to fruition. Yeah, let's go get a Thriller, guys. Let's go. Let's go. I, mean, I don't really know what to say. I just, uh, I just really like driving for Kevin. So I think it's three days from now. It's going to mark your 10th year anniversary of winning four Thrillers in a row. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. I, I think I don't really think about it year-round much, and then when you get in here, you kind of realize what special, you know, feat all that was, and um, yeah, it kind of reminds you of, of how cool it was, especially back then. So um, I enjoy it. I, I like coming here. I've always felt like this place races great when it's right, and uh, you know, had some had fun last week with the shootout, and hopefully, we can carry over. Yeah. Um totally different uh, you know game here this year obviously we got to you know Kevin built his own car and just kind of something I've wanted to do for a while and kind of the fun of building a car for this place and, and how especially you can make it to an extent so um, it is Bertrand came along who has helped us with motors for a few years and, and wanted to be a part of it so that kind of gave me the freedom to go ahead and do it and uh, yeah just Trying to figure it all out. I, I don't know a ton. I don't have a whole lot of notes to go off of or anything, so we're just kind of guessing. But I felt like we were pretty close to, to start off with. Uh, yesterday actually went really good. I thought, you know, for never uh, the car never being on the racetrack, we uh, were up to speed right away, and um, you know didn't really have too many things that we needed to change, and nothing really big. So you know, just a little bit of small changes, and uh, kind of get ourselves a little bit more in the ballpark, and then. Uh, after that, you know, it's just up to me to, to do my job. You know? Very pleasant. Good afternoon and welcome. And it is the final preliminary night here of the 37th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. Inside of row number one out of Covington, Ohio, that's the 23K Kyle Simon. And alongside of him, the aforementioned man who's been in the booth with us, the 39, that's Logan Seavey, the California native. Nine so, cars, eight laps. Obviously, eyes are going to be on Seavey. All right, we'll see if anybody can make that top crew work. We'll see what CV does here off the jump. Green flag is out. CV and Simon will duke it out to the corner. Simon will clear him down the back straightaway. Here comes the 11G Avery Goodman. Caleb, you called it. Goodman quickly into the third spot. Now going to try and battle the top two. And CV's not going to give up on that outside group. We've heard a lot, a lot of guys say this week, I'm not just going to follow behind somebody. We're going to try a different group. CV goes to the middle that time down at three and four. He'll try it again in one and two. CV continuing to run second, trying to chase the 23K of Kyle Simon. Simon's got a tall task drawing the pole with CV alongside of him. He's three laps to the good right now. CV goes wider this time in one and two. Simon still hanging down on the bottom. Kyle Simon putting up a valiant effort for halfway, and Simon continues to hold off one of the favorites of the night, Logan CV. CV can really use this spot. The difference between starting second and finishing second. Starting second and finishing first is 12 points. 93 to hold second, 105 to win the race. CV will drive to the outside again. This time he's got a little bit of bite off the top of one and two. Simon though hangs with him. They'll go wheel to wheel into the corner. CV hooks through the middle and Logan CV will finally take the top spot away. Might have taken him a little bit longer than he wanted to, but with a lap and a half to go, CV will grab the lead. We had a great battle going for the lead as the white flag is out. Top five are pretty well spread out. This is a battle for sixth. Mike Beach has it. As Will work down the back straightaway for the final time and into three and four, it is Logan CV making the pass, coming to two to go and picking up the heat race win. But a good battle there between CV 
and Simon. He kind of saw Seavey go up and clean off his own groove, make it happen. He was the only one running in the middle, and he stayed committed to it. I think that was a big part of the attack for Logan. Logan Seavey not going to give up there, got the win. You were trying a little bit of everything. Did you ever find a line that felt comfortable? Uh, no, not really. You know, I knew um, I knew Kyle was going to be good on the bottom. I was really, you know, hoping I can get a better start than that. And I just kind of kind of spun a little bit, and um, he was running the bottom really good. And I knew I knew that middle and three and four was okay. I just couldn't really make any speed through one and two. And I finally kind of got up all the way to the wall, and I got a little bit faster. So, um, yeah, I mean, we got a little bit of work to do. Uh, uh, you know, not ideal there, but uh, at least we were able to win that and um, put ourselves in a decent spot. So got to work a little bit more and uh, hopefully we got a good qualifier do you feel like you brought the package tonight to get it done yeah I felt so good Monday and um, felt good there just you know the racetrack was a little bit like yesterday a little a little tough to pass and um, it's just kind of how it is but um, yeah luckily we were able to sneak behind there and I'm excited for later once I got up there I was like we could have gone way further probably yeah it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was just not even Cushion. That's what I thought that three and four like juice would stay, you know what I mean? Like we have a racetrack up there and it just got dirty. Yeah, like, as soon as you get over that crest, you're gone. You have to stay like right on it. It's ridiculous. One and two is even some moisture in the middle, but I'm just so wet. Oh good, they'll get it better for all our Qualifier number four lines up this way, third row to the inside. That row we had just mentioned, Logan Seavey in the 39 car, and alongside of him is the 19, 19M of Ethan Mitchell. So Seavey wins. He's your high point guy. We are going to find out fourth and final qualifier. Final qualifier of the 2023 Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. We are green. Curran gets wide on the start. Here comes Cummins. Kyle Cummins quickly going to work. From third to second, now trying to grab the lead. Shane Connell by a nose at the line. Here comes CB. CB to the bottom side. As we follow along with our drone cam, CB with a short slider. He'll drive off the corner. CB quickly from fifth to third, and you've got a new leader out in front, way up there in front of the drone. That's the 3G of Kyle Cummins. So Cummins from third to first, trying to get a put, trying to put together a good run, get himself towards the front of this A main. But here comes Logan Seavey, Seavey on the prowl. He'll dive to the bottom side. Slide job for a second. Connell, as you said, thought he'd be around the bottom. He's running the top. Seavey able to make the move with a slide job. He'll again run the slider line at three and four. Logan Seavey from five to two, and now a yellow. Lights are out. We're gonna go back to racing. CV on Connell's back bumper. Cummins will bring him back to green. We're back underway. Now Kyle following in Nostradamus. Caleb's orders goes to the bottom in one and two. Now he'll slide up to the top right in front of CV. And Kyle Cummins loving the work that Shane Connell's doing for him there. As Cummins opens up a little bit of daylight now. CV with a slide job. Connell coming back after him. CV going to shut the door on him in one and two. CV will officially spot but now he's got work to do in a short time to get there as he tries to run down Kyle Cummins. Three car battle here for third. Cottle, Goodman, and Felker. Here goes Felker around the outside of Goodman. Now he'll drive across his nose. Felker started in ninth trying to grab third. Andrew Felker trying to race from ninth into the A He'll slide up alongside Cottle. Cottle beats him to the spot. He'll maintain it for now. Andrew Felker is on the move. Ethan Mitchell been quiet here in this qualifier. He creeps into the pit picture. He goes around Goodman. He grabs pit. Andrew Felker trying to go nine to three here and give himself a shot at an A-May. Meanwhile, CB has caught Cummins. CB with a bomb in the three and four. Cummins crosses him over. White flag one more time around. CB's got the lead and now a high point man spot if he can hang on to it. He runs a slider line. Cummins to his back bumper. He'll go to the bottom. CB goes to the bottom to protect. Working out of the corner. Checkered flag will fall. A high point man up Logan CB. Logan CB five to one. A great duel between himself and Kyle Cummins. And CB 
staking his claim as an absolute challenger to Mr. Friday Night Justin Grant. And Seavey's going to do it from the pole position. Logan Seavey, the final qualifier winner of the night. Logan, that was a burn burner. Uh, walk me through that last lap. How did you work around Cummins there to uh, get the win? Yeah, I knew uh, my car was so fast. I could I could get off off of two really good and, and get big runs. And uh, he kind of wobbled. He got it on the left rear real hard. And I knew uh, that would slow up his entry a little bit. And that's uh, the run I needed to to get across there and clear him. And um, yeah, these points matter so much. That one spot I know is, you know, possibly the difference between being on the front row or not. So uh, you really want to get out front of these races and, and try to drive away. So I knew if I wanted to start up front, I need to win that. And uh, that was really, really big. Well, you should be on the pole. Kevin Swindell has got this 39 car really, really good. And with Kevin kind of going out and starting his own team, did you feel like you would be this uh, competitive right off the bat? Um, I knew I knew the car would be good. I know uh, Kevin doesn't have a, a whole lot of notes really or how to even build these things, but we've gotten so much help with, you know, so many people with Spike and Stanton and the whole Hardy family and everybody that helps out this race car with Bertrand Motorsports. And uh, man, it just takes a lot to build a new car and it's come out this fast. It's, it's really cool. I feel like um, I feel like on the race champions, we were one of the better cars there. And um, we just keep getting it, you know, a little bit better every time we hit the track. And um, man, yeah, if this, uh, it's, like you said, if we're on the pole, it's, uh, it's awesome for us. And um, yeah, this thing could be dangerous here. Hashtag. Ball. Joe. Hashtag. Your driver's fire. Hashtag balls. Hey, you better run that time. Nice call right back on the right rear. Hey, I didn't see you. I meant to talk to you about getting going. You're good. Yeah. Were you, were you end up second from that? You'll probably be on the pole. Oh, really? Who's second? Oh, wow. We might have a turn more in that one than we did the other night, right now. I and feel it. I get, I get stuck good. It was yesterday, the other night you didn't need it because there's moisture. Now we're sliding across the leg. It looks like you can like short across there if you have to really Like nice. when I slide them, I get down, I like get it set and I throttle like across. Like I don't drive in and just slide across. I can throttle yeah, like right here. drive across. Yeah. yeah, I think we can get it to, I would be nervous about going too much just because it's going to curve up. Yeah. But we can get a little bit square and up a little bit better. Right now I'm, on, I'm in the moisture and I throttle and it still goes this way, which is okay when I'm racing. Once I get once that moisture all the way goes by and you just hit the edge, you're going to be spinning in black. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, the engine sucks. But the car makes up for it. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. And Kevin, since Logan clinched the pole, what have conversations between you guys looked like? Uh, just how not to screw this thing up, I think, at this point. So. Um, just watch the racetrack here and see what it gives us and, and kind of go from there. But I, I think we're, we're really close. We just, I think, just not go too far over the edge here with it. Yesterday marked the 10-year anniversary of your four in a row. As a car owner now, do those wins feel even more special? Yeah, it's cool, you know, and to see that, and that'd be, you know, pretty special, especially with John being such a big part of, of everything we've done, even the sprint car stuff. So um, enjoy that a lot. And, um, you know, it's kind of a stage stressed over what we were going to go through tonight and, and getting through tonight since, I mean, this is the first time this thing's touched a racetrack other than Monday and really the first time I've been this, you know, in control of, of a midget program. So uh, excited for what we did and, um, you know, Bertrand and them coming on board to help me get this, you know, make this happen. So uh, happy with where we're at and go finish it off. Do you feel a little less stress knowing where you start now or is the stress going to continue all the way through the end of the feature? I think now it's just, uh, I feel like we did everything we could to get to this far. Now it's just on us to not mess it up. So um, not so worried about the rest of it, just making sure we make the right decisions and, and get him comfortable and let him go do his job. Can you give us a little insight on how this midget actually came together? Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much ordered when we left here, um, like February or something like that. It took me until August to get a frame and other stuff for a long time, but um, yeah, just talked to Tim and said, you know, he's got pavement midgets that they run IRP and stuff with Cody Swanson, and was like, you want to have a dirt car too? So um, he was excited to get involved, and um, you know, it's his motor in the car as well. So he's been a big part of this, and it, it wouldn't have happened without him. So uh, you know, he had fun building it, and, and now enjoying actually racing it. That it's going well. Logan CV is going to start on the pole for tonight's feature event. That's Kevin Swindell. Well, guys, it's finally time again. Time for the A main. You can feel the anticipation in the air. I'm going to go with Logan Seavey to win this one from the pole. As soon as I saw Logan Seavey on Monday night in the Race of Champions, I really wanted to peg that car as the guy who not only was going to win the Race of Champions, not only was going to win a prelim night 
I think Logan Seavey's got a great chance to win this whole daggone thing. How are you, buddy? How are you? Good. Good? Go okay, get it, brother. From the pole, Logan Seavey has looked fantastic. And our brother Clinton Boyles going outside him, looking for the biggest win in his life. I love this guy. <laughs> Into three and out of corner number four. Great flag, we're underway. Seavey down to the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to jet out to the early advantage. Here comes Ethan Mitchell. Mitchell trying to throw his hat in the ring to the outside of Mr. Friday Night. Grant digging down on the bottom side. It's good over there in one and two. He'll pull up alongside McCarthy. McCarthy with the run off the top side. Ethan Mitchell's there. Oh, Mitchell right over Grant's right rear bumper. And Mitchell into the fence. He hopped the right rear tire of Justin Grant and into the fence. Open red, it looks like, Brian. Yep, crew's coming everywhere. I mean, if you don't think you need any more, alone. I don't think I need any more. It looks good, like once you got going, I mean, Ace can kind of run and ish your pace, but I don't think he can do it every lap. Like, if he hits it right, he kind of can run close to you, but... No, I don't think we need any more. Going forward. Good. I think we're fine. Up in front, it's Logan Seavey, Ace McCarthy, Justin Grant, the first two trying to chase him. Top two lock in to the Saturday A feature. We're back to green. Grant trying to clear McCarthy for second. Justin Grant's got the spot now. He's got work to do, though, because you can see Logan Seavey way out in front. Seavey starting to gap the field. That number 39 machine is an absolute rocket ship. It is no different. Open red, a main qualifier, doesn't matter. Seavey's got an absolute seat out in front. 16 down, 14 to go. Out front, Logan Seavey's just on cruise control. As he works into the back of the field, he's in the lap traffic. And Justin Grant is still about a straightaway away from him. The tires on McDermott's car, they're very nice and clean. You see that, they're very black. So, uh, you know, it's its rolling around the bottom. And uh, I saw Grant still running the top two as well. You know, he's going to need to get down because Seavey's already gotten down and he didn't even entering behind lap traffic. Yeah, this is the tough part with the track plays. Remember, oh, that brings Danner. Danner up in the fence. Saw that just at the top of our screen. Don't know what happened. So it's going to be who is willing to push harder than anybody else and maybe make an enemy. You've got to be precise. You've got to hit your marks. Logan Seavey, even in the rubber, able to pull away from Justin Grant. That's how good the Swindell Bertrand 39 has been. Your top five are all being well-behaved gentlemen for the time being. Logan CV and Justin Grant, the two guys looking to make the pole shuffle. Logan CV looking to stop Mr. Friday Night. Has got one more time around this racetrack. Grant took a little run to the inside, one and two. But coming off a of corner number four, a Friday Night prelim win for Logan CV in the Chili Bowl. And Justin Grant, the second car, is going to make the pole shuffle. And that's a great run for those guys over there at that pit. Uh, you know, super happy for them, especially Logan. Uh, you know, he's he's worked a long long time, and he's a very talented race car driver. I'm happy to see him uh, have some success here at the Chili Bowl. up by his crew that is cool that is pretty cool you know he's he's a good dude through and through and uh, I'm, I'm super happy for them obviously Kevin and, and all those people involved over there they put in a lot of hard work First off, just can't thank Kevin and Jordan and uh, you know everyone that puts you know put so much effort into this car. Hardy, Colton Hardy, his whole family, uh, Lane Hunter, everybody that works on this thing, uh, the Bertrand family for you know making this thing uh, go and you know help you know just 
been offering so much support the last, uh, you know, so many years, way before, way before I've been here. And uh, to have drink, uh, to have a victory fuel in the car, uh, our first race out with this car is so awesome to put in victory line. Yeah, not really the way we want to win in the rubber. I want to win, you know, racing hard and, and moving around, but that's kind of the, the cards we were dealt. A win is a win, and most importantly, you're in contention for the championship tomorrow night. Yeah, there's uh, no one else I'd rather be racing under this building win, uh, than with Kevin. So I just, you know, believe in him, and we just uh, mesh really well. And uh, I hadn't won a midget race in over a year, and I kind of texted him about halfway through the year, uh, thinking maybe he'd find somebody else because I wasn't looking too good. But uh, he stuck with me, and I stuck with him, and uh, he built a brand new car. And uh, to come out here and win on night one is unbelievable. So like I said, just so thankful for these guys that put this car under me. And uh, I feel like this is... You know, as best of a shot as I've ever had of winning this. So uh, let's just get this pill over here in a minute and see where we end up. Um, yeah, even more special to do it with Kevin. I mean, uh, he's obviously the the best to ever do it in here. And uh, for him to come back, you know, it's been 10 or so years since he's won in here. And uh, to come back with his own car and uh, to have so much speed right away and um, just to, you know, just put together a good night. It's been a while since I've done that, and it's been over a year since I've won a midget race, so um, it's it's been a struggle for me, and uh, to come here with him, I just, just kind of pumps my confidence up, back up where it needs to be, and uh, I know my car is going to be really good, so um, yeah, overall, just really, really happy, and I know, uh, I know it means a lot to him. Um, actually, that was pretty serious. I texted him just like, Hey, what's the what's the plan for Chili Bowl? And um, I knew he was trying to build a car, but uh, I think I ran top five at maybe two major races this year, maybe three. Um, so I was pretty awful. And you know, he had every reason to find somebody else to race for him, but uh, he believed in me. And um, you know, I think he was kind of hoping I'd believe in him coming to build his own midget. He's never done that before, and um, you know, he kind of just normally shows up and uh, makes some setup decisions. But for the most part, it was always in Sammy's hands. So. Um, yeah, now that he built his own car and then um, we were supposed to test Friday and the, we didn't even get the car to start until Saturday and we had to practice here Sunday. So it was kind of a uh, last minute deal. It's you know, tough to get parts and all that stuff these days. But, um, but yeah, we kind of had issues just getting the thing to start earlier or a week ago and uh, to be here uh, in Victory Lane is pretty wild. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I think it helps, right? I mean, so if I draw a two, I think that means the worst I could start is fourth. Um, so I think it helps for sure, um, makes it a little easier. But overall, it's 55 laps. Like Justin said, he started fifth tonight. There's, um, you know, no reason why you can't go by a few pretty quickly and then, um, you know, get your car going good and, you know, make some moves. So I think overall, the guy who's going to win Saturday is probably going to win regardless. Um, it takes, you know, near perfection for 55 laps. But I definitely feel like um, drawing a little bit higher is a, is a slight advantage. So, um, yeah, it definitely doesn't hurt. I think I've been so underdeveloped with everything that – I wasn't even prepared for everything to go as well as it has and for us to receive the, you know, the positive feedback that we have. You know, I, I went from, I feel like I just handled all the t-shirt stuff to now all I do all day long is talk about the drink. And I, I feel like the, the more positive and the more people coming over to talk about it that, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying it more than anything. It's like a nice change of pace for us to be doing something different. Um, I, I can't believe that it's actually going as well as it is. Can you tell me about those little hidden details on the race car? <laughs> but they unloaded everything at the at the shop, mm -hmm. and Mom apparently was outside with Emerson, and there is literally Sebastian on the race car. <laughs> there's like three stickers. Totally yeah, there's right. a mermaid. Which I, have you found the mermaid? Uh, not yet. I can't find the mermaid. There's um, Flounder and there's Sebastian, which hopefully these bring us a little bit of luck, Dylan. Hopefully Emerson brought us luck. That would be really nice. You are looking in live as the pole shuffle cars roll down the ramp and onto the raceway for pole shuffle hot laps here at the 37th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. The rowdies in the hole, turn number two, starting <laughs> to get crazy. As you look at last night's winner, that is Logan Seavey, the Kevin Swindell Victory Fuel 39. One of the best cars, I think, in the building this whole week. Did Golubic just show us that there is a high side for Logan Seavey and Tanner Thorson to use here in the final shuffle. This is for the first two rows of the A-Main event. We're green. Logan Seavey might try to get up and around on the first lap. 
He sticks with him down the back straightaway as Thorson trying to show something. Thorson's going to try to get down and fill the spot that CV isn't right now. And Logan CV using the high side. Yeah, Logan's just trying to keep that thing wound up. I think he thinks he's confident enough that Shane Golovic blew off enough of it that he's going to have a run. Hank Davis doing a masterful job on the bottom. You ride on board with the Austin Blair drone. You got Thorson up top following CV. McIntosh on the bottom following Hank Davis. Two by two, pretty even. Let's see what kind of run CV has off of four. White flag, I think he had it at the line. One more time around for the pole. Can Davis get the pole or is it Logan? Logan, the only guy to make the high side work, gets down, closed the door, and has the pole for tonight's main. Logan CV and Hank Davis make up your front row. Rowdy's going nuts. They smell something in the building for Logan CV. Friday night dominance, races his way to the pole of tonight's 55 lap Chili Bowl A main. And he gives a salute to the Rowdies there in turn number two. He loves them, and they show the love right back. The pole shuffle is done here at the Chili Bowl. But that's just the start. Was that better? Huh? Was that way better? Yeah. <laughs> My glove might have fell on. I almost got him on the start. I just bashed the wall coming to the line. <laughs> I thought I was going to get him on the start. I did too. Because he was starting to slick too. I mean, we're on the same boat. I figured I could drive across his nose. Yeah, then almost he just wouldn't have faded so far. I think it just stayed up, yeah. Or it stayed in the middle, like you said. Yeah. I got, I got much him up in the line. Yeah. You don't get it packed good enough, you just roll it higher. That's what it's like the that whatever race we ran last year that was so just like crummy and like it just eats tires apart. I would think there's a better likelihood that they drench it than they underdone. Because I think that was their dress rehearsal right there and it didn't last very long. Already perfectly good, I guess you could say so far. How did you first make these 50 laps? Yeah, that's the key, right? I knew our car was good from the first laps of practice and um, we're just hoping to put ourselves in position to have a shot here and uh, we've done that you know like I said pretty much uh, pretty much perfectly and um, yeah I've been just been super confident in my race car and that's what's allowed me to you know run hard enough to, to make the right moves and uh, you know we're just able to run people down and make like I said just make the moves when I need to and um, you know not force stuff that I don't have to and uh, that helps a lot when you're you know, not having to get desperate when you know you can catch guys and uh, you know pass them another time or, or you know what have you so um, yeah now we just gotta go out there and see what they give us for a racetrack and then um, yeah try to set the pace and uh, you know just control the race a little bit I am more than ready and I like I said I I feel like since practice um, you know I said this is gonna be my, my best shot to win this race um, you know we've kind of proved that so um, now I just gotta do my job he is at a center California he drives for a four-time Chili Bowl driving champion and the Kevin Swindell, Mike Kerr, Bertram Motorsports, Spike, Stanton SR11, Swindell Speed Lab, Victory Fuel number 39, Logan CV! If you don't want to bring it back, don't bring it back. The final 55 lap story of this year's Chili Bowl Nationals. He's on the list of the favorite driver to win his first Golden Draw. I'm going with CV. It all comes down to this 365 plus entries, five preliminary nights, 24 of the best race car drivers in the world here in Tulsa. And at a corner number four, green flag, we go racing. It is Logan CV and Hank Davis leading them down. CV gets out, drag race by Davis down the back straightaway. Lap number one, chalk it up on that bingo card. Oh. Davis is leading, however, problems in turn number three. That's Spencer Baston upside down. I believe McDermott is involved as well. So the one to go signal given to the drivers and we will have a complete restart. Logan Seavey, Hank Davis in row number one to set the pace once again. Through turn number three, out of corner number four, we're green with Chili Bolivie. And this time, Seavey way better launching from the bottom. 
Davis is actually going to fall out of line and into fourth. And Davis drifted back on the original start. Lap number one belongs to Logan Seaton as he will set the pace here on this field. Logan Seaton continuing to set the pace. We're 10 laps into this. 45 to go as you watch the ticker. And this is the battle for the lead out front. We'll try the driver of the Swindell Bertrand car now. It's a new entity owning this race car. Cannon had a really good corner there, Caleb. Didn't mean to interrupt, but man, I tell you what, that slick center off is starting to get a little bit of a factor. We saw Logan CD open up his entry a little bit. Cannon got right to the tail tank. Cannon right now just trying to bide his time, waiting for that track to change, an opportunity to go on the top side. It's tough for CD to get to be the first guy there because he doesn't see much in the back of the field right now. And you're leading. Why jump out of the groove when everything you've done so far has got you to the right point. McIntosh is all over him though, and now Cannon going up to try to work around CV. He's got a good run. Is it there? Too far around in one and two. Forcing there looking for oh, second. Oh, what a move by Cannon McIntosh off the corner. Gets up underneath in turn number three. Battle for the lead, 40 to go. Here 10 laps down, or 15 laps down, and Cannon McIntosh is gonna have a run, but Logan Seavey just good strong through the middle. Well, Seavey might have found the upper groove by mistake here because he slid across turn number two and had to run it by accident. Now he feels that it's there and the 39 car is starting to creep up the racetrack and starting to expand over McIntosh. Well timed for Seavey. McIntosh, big run on the bottom. Seavey gets down to throw the tomahawk chop in the block. He'll keep McIntosh in behind him. There's still only a couple of car lengths apart. The back of the field is looming as CV up on the high side. McIntosh again trying to beat him down low into turn number one, but the 39 still too strong. Logan goes back to the low side of three and four, changing up his line, forcing Cannon to make an adjustment. Now Logan back to the bottom of one and two. Cannon's going to try to circle in and through the middle. Back straight away and still just a car length separating them as we are 20 laps in. There he McIntosh goes. with the move. McIntosh down low as CV slipped up. And on lap 21, Cannon McIntosh leads. Logan CV made a little bit of a mistake. Cannon McIntosh able to diamond off and got up underneath. So Cannon McIntosh now going to be the first one to negotiate lap traffic. Here comes Cannon though on the left, going to negotiate Spencer Mason in lap traffic. And Logan CV starting to close in for the lead. Third place just changed hands as it's Thorson getting back around Abreu for the spot. We are at the halfway point of this main event. And it's Cannon McIntosh with the lead. But Logan CV picking up the pace once again. McIntosh hanging it wide off of four. CV a little more committed to the bottom of the racetrack, but they are in heavy lap cars as McIntosh goes bouncing off the cushion. CV right there on the bottom to block, and look at him change lines just like that. CV the racecraft, Noah Cannon would likely go down to try to save the position. Goes to the high side and now looking to circle McIntosh for the lead. Yeah, Cannon was trying to search for a lane. Oh, Spencer Basin on the wall right in front of your leaders. Everybody gets through. Caution is out though. That could have been disastrous for both Cannon McIntosh, Logan Seavey as Chris Windham is spun around in turn number four, bringing out the caution. So making their way through, that's one through 14. Lights are out, we're back racing. Yeah, 16 to nine for Kyle Jones. Keep an eye on that car as we're back underway. Cannon Mack goes top shelf and through the middle goes Logan Seavey trying to take that Swindell car through the middle. He decides to go top shelf, opening the door for Tanner Thorson. It's a three car battle at the front. Seavey holds on a second. Crossover move high to low and Seavey's gonna retake the lead on the restart. Logan Seavey, the middle of one and two. That is his home sweet home at the moment as we complete our 31st lap around this track. And Seavey's got the lead, and now it's Thorson who has taken over second position and is chasing after your race leader. That bottom groove is starting to clean up real nice, Chris Wilder. We need to keep an eye on that. And Seavey notices, he's seeing that. Seavey goes back to the top of three and four, and Thorson is right there. Down low, CD in one and two. Here's where McIntosh comes into play. McIntosh, oh, up and over the ledge in turn two. Golovic's gonna get back by him for third. CD up high, Thorson kind of missed the bottom on exit. He's gotta be careful, because if he misses it too much, Golovic might force him up and out of the groove for the second position. Golovic also having to deal with Cannon McIntosh, who's just looking for consistency in the high groove here. 
make good laps, don't make the mistake as Cannon trying to hold on to a podium spot. Golovic trying to keep him away from it. We've got 10 to go. Chris, the next time by, we're into single digits. We certainly are, and so here comes where do drivers make that game-winning decision, that race-winning decision? Do you stick to the bottom or are you like Cannon trying to rip the top to keep a hold of something? But Golovic is there as here you go. Battle up front coming to eight laps to go. Tanner Dorsett sniffing the lead underneath Logan Seavey. Logan Seavey's going to block the bottom in turn one and two. That's what he's done the last several times. What does Tanner Dorsett have coming through three and four? Tanner's just got to clean up his three and four. That's really where it is. That's where Thorson gets close to him in one and two. They're all completely even. In fact, Logan looks to be a little bit better at this point. Two car lengths separate them. We're coming into six to go. Logan Seavey's looking for his first Chili Bowl win. Here comes Tanner, though, leaning hard on that right rear, trying to figure out what it's going to take to get around his former teammate, Logan Seavey. Two car breakaway at the front. They started to pull away from Cannon McIntosh. Five fingers in the air, side by side at the start finish line. The battle is on for the Chili Bowl Nationals. Logan, CV, all sorts of pressure coming from Tanner Thorson. CV decided that he wanted to get to the low side of three and four and maybe make Tanner get off the groove that he's been in and drive around him. Tanner all over the rear bumper of Logan CV. As CV's move to the bottom, brought Thorson closer in three and four. Thorson peaked in the middle. No dice. CV low. Thorson again peeking into the middle. Nothing there. Tries the bottom of turn number two. The next time around, two laps to decide the Chili Bowl. What will Tanner Thorson do to go back to back? Can Logan CV hang on? He's trying not to make a single mistake. Both drivers hunt for the bottom side of the racetrack. Logan CV may have slipped a little bit. Thorson is there through turn number four. The doctor's jacket's going to be in the air. CV one more time around the Expo Raceway. Playing a little defense is Logan CV down to the final fifth mile. Thorson looks underneath in turn number two as they roll into turn number three and out of corner number four. Caution is out. Oh, no. Caution flag waves coming to the checkered flag. We will get a shootout to the finish, and it's Rico Abreu stuffed up into turn number one. All right, let's finish it off the right way. CV needs an excellent start here. So far, looks like he's got it. He's got to get through four more corners. It's down to six. Now he's got to get through four more corners. Into three, CV to the white flag. Thorson, using all the front he can, tries to get underneath it two, down the back straight away, and out of the final turn, Chili Bowl champion, Logan CV. Tanner Thorson is second, Cannon McIntosh, Shane Golubic, and Emerson Axum. Logan CV fulfills the promise that he's had for so many years, and Kevin Swindell gets a Chili Bowl as a car owner. How cool is that? 11 years ago, Kevin Swindell won for the fourth time. On that anniversary, he gets a car owner Golden Driller Trophy with his driver, Logan CV. He wanted Logan in his car from day one. The two formed a great partnership. It needed to be the right combination, the right time for him. And this year, the program changes just a hair a little ways before this ends up going on. As Bertrand comes involved, with Swindell, they put a brand new car together under their own package, and it all pays off as Logan CV, we're gonna follow him with the drone, out of Southern California, is now immortalized. You did a hell of a job. <laughs> hey, you managed the f out of that.
Oh my god, Kevin! Kevin. Oh. Yeah. everybody. <laughs> Logan. Hey, Logan. 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 Hey. Oh my god, there's your headphones! You can be denied. There's your headphones! There are your headphones! There we go. The man. Let's go. <laughs> That's a dream, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but then you told me you're just here. Oh, I love you so much. That was a beautiful Oh my god. Oh, 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 hey, okay. We gotta get you up there. Let's okay. go get a Come driller, on. guys. Let's go. Go. Let's go, guys. Man, just uh, to do it for Kevin is it's unbelievable. I don't think it's even gotten close to hitting me yet that uh, we just did this. So this means probably about as much as Kevin is is any, any of his do. And oh, man, I just can't. Uh, can't express how good that car was. Um, I can make speed on the top, I can make speed on the bottom, and I knew Tanner was a little bit better than me in one and two, and I could see him kind of cutting through the middle there in three and four, and I could smell rubber, but every time I went down there, I just, I couldn't really get the thing to hook up, so I just kept, you know, blasting the cushion, and I could see I was getting a good enough run off of four to where I'd get away just enough to where I could maintain through one and two, but, um, man, yeah, and then I just really kept seeing him, kept seeing him, and going down the front stretch, I just cranked the right rear shock as soft as I could get it, and, Try to park it on the berm, and then instantly the rubber was right there. I don't think I don't think I'd win if I'd have waited one more lap. So um, Tanner did everything he could and ran a great race. But uh, yeah, it just stinks that it took rubber there at the end. But uh, yeah, I just can't say enough about my car. Uh, Kevin, uh, Colton, Hunter, Lane, JT, Mikey, everybody that's working on this thing, Virtue and Motorsports. Um, man, I just uh, can't say enough about it, man. To come out here in our first attempt and to win is unbelievable. So uh, excited to get back here. Man, I hope uh, I hope the fans enjoyed it. Like I said, I know uh, rubber's not ideal for anybody, but uh, man, uh, we just want to go with the drillers. So I don't really care. I'm gonna let you get that driller and hold it up in the air. Logan Seavey, Chili Bowl champ. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I didn't even, you know, set in until uh, until I got the driller and you know could talk to Kevin for a little bit. And uh, man, I just uh, I'm just so happy to do it for Kevin. You know, he deserves it, and um, you know he'd probably have a lot more, um, you know, if it wasn't for uh, his accident. So um, yeah, like I said, it's just uh, means a lot to win this race in general, but to to win it in the 39 uh, in our first try is really really cool. You know, special to do what we did and, and kind of take a leap and, and get this car together and, and for it to be as good as it's been and. Um, I think we've we've kind of pushed Logan to be more aggressive the last couple of years than he has been, and he came in here ready to race, and um, he did a hell of a job managing that whole race, and you know keeping up with the adjustments in the car and stuff. So I couldn't be prouder of him, and you know I've I've felt like he could do this for a long time, and um, glad to finally get him in the right spot. No, I mean as hard as the shootout is to to accomplish, and and we managed to do that, and then to come here and, and have the week that we did, I. I really couldn't have dreamed that it would go this well. So, uh, just super proud of everybody that helped and, and everybody that put money in and stuff to get this car here. To period, and um, I, we were working on this thing up till Saturday night just to get it to start and run and function. So, uh, just excited that it went this well, and uh, I could be happier. Uh, this is ten times more stressful, man. I, I I told somebody like halfway, I was like, I'd much rather be sitting in the seat of that thing than sitting up here watching. So. Uh, it's really cool. It's special, and to finally get uh, that fifth that I felt like I was so close to so many times, and even if it's done this way, so uh, yeah, just thrilled, man. And as soon as we got in this car, we were, you know, I mean, instantly, you know, had a lot of people even see it like the, visually. We were just had a lot of speed, and um, I was just comfortable right right away and able to drive really hard. And uh, that's what it takes to win this race. You have to be comfortable enough to run 100% for 55 laps, and um, that's what it takes to win. So, um, yeah, my confidence turned right around pretty quickly, and uh, I've got all the confidence in the world in Kevin and and his team that he puts together for me. And um, to win to win a, the Chili Bowl and his his first try as a car owner is uh, unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what to say. I just, uh, I just really like driving for Kevin. Um, yeah, I kind of forgot what you asked, but or what you said, but, um, but yeah, obviously overall, just, just super, super happy. All right, who wants to party? <laughs> this guy. That is. This guy.
I don't think I've ever drank a Coors Light before, though. Well, that, might be your first day. that might be your first day. I really know what to ask you, but what do you even have to say? That's cool. Thank you.